Hi everybody, I'm Bill Diamond, and we're working on an exciting new video, a documentary called Basil Gogo's King of the Monster. Now Basil was an incredible force in the world of art, and he inspired so many people in the industry, from makeup to directors to producers to actors uh, to anyone you could imagine out there that we're doing special effects or anything in the industry from the day he painted the first famous monster cover was the day that opened up color to all our classic movie monsters and i'm here with basil's family to be able to tell you about this new documentary which we need your help for on this gofundme page to be able to have this documentary be able to tell the story of basil's incredible life and story of in the industry and how he uh, covered every aspect of art. Linda, Basil worked on almost everything I can imagine, uh, from posters to uh, movie um, posters to regular banners to everything, isn't that correct? Yeah, he did CD covers, DVD covers. He did posters for movies. He did, um, as you said, magazine covers. He also did paperbacks and uh, men's magazine covers, but m the monsters, yeah, I think every single monster magazine that was around, Basil had some influence on whether he painted it or somebody was influenced by him and tried to do something similar. Yeah, Ken Kelly, the uh, incredible artist, came after Basil and said that he was so intimidated when he knew Basil. Yes, he, was. Uh, he, he said, oh, I have to be as, you know, try to be as good as Basil Gogos. And, and you grew up with uh, Basil being around you as an artist too. But more as a fine artist is how I knew him because he wasn't doing as much with the monsters at that time. He was doing things with, uh, for rock um, and doing covers for um, the rock industry. But um, he was a fine artist and um, I would sit behind him and try to draw and paint like him to no avail, of course. But uh, uh, there were a lot of us who were in awe of his abilities. I remember as a kid walking in and seeing the first famous monsters when I was like 10 years old and pulling it off the counter because of those colors. And then I met him in 1975 at a famous monster convention with uh, Forey Ackerman and Peter Cushing was there. Wow. And I got to know Basil at that time and, and just got to know him for, for all those years later. We would go to cons together and see a lot of his fans. But we're here to tell you this story and many, many other people. By you helping us fund this, we get to go see some of the actors and directors and producers and artists and friends that took his classes that learned so much from Basil and how it influenced their industry. But we can't do this alone. We kind of need your help to help us fund it because we have a lot of traveling to do. There are people that have been inspired by him all over the globe and we want to find them and hear from them so that we can tell Basil's story properly and letting you hear it from us. So not only from the family side, the great stories that you're going to be able to tell about him and how you've been with him for so many years. And how his fans loved seeing him at the at the uh, Comic Con. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, when I met Basil, he wasn't really doing the art, and then he got pulled into it again. And um, I didn't know that he was. I didn't know anything about him. So I went to the first Comic Con with him, and the people hadn't seen him for years. So when we walked in, people started clapping. And I was shocked. <laughs> well, that's because he was a rock star. Yeah. He influenced so many artists and so many directors and makeup artists um, like uh, Rick Baker. Rick was very influenced yeah. by him. So were many other people. And those are the type of people we're going to hear from personally on how his artwork infected this wide industry, even in the rock Era. He did movie posters, like you said, you saw him. In oh, the oh, absolutely, and T-shirts. And Rob Zombie um, was uh, a, a. He did the albums for Rob Zombie and for the Misfits, and I mean, some amazing, amazing um, artwork for them that really transformed, I think, uh, the way that people saw Basil and then also saw the artists themselves. Well, what, what? 
inspired the young people of that era uh, and that monster craze was the fact that we saw the monsters in black and white, okay, and they were on television and film in black and white, and then there is that cover on Famous Monsters with Vincent Price, that first one, and how he inspired with this color, you can see it on the wall behind us, just uh, splatters of color that we had never seen before, and that is what hurled, and, and his imagination and his techniques were, he brought the monsters into fine art. Yeah, yeah well look at um, somebody like Guillermo del Toro, who talks about his monsters, he loves monsters, mm -hmm. and he talks about his monsters as Basil did, because Basil loved them, he felt that they were people, and I think that after that, people started looking at the monsters differently. Beside all the amazing color, which brought them totally into the modern world, um, there was this feeling that Basil gave those monsters that made them so real, so human, so, you know, There's something that you There's a lot of sensitivity in, right. to, to the monsters. You saw a, a, a um, sort of an app, you know, something, somebody who was sympathetic towards them. That's right. And we got to see them in color, and that is what his artwork transcended, this whole industry. And with us doing this documentary, we get to tell this amazing story about this amazing man, and we cannot do this alone without you, your help out there, because we need to travel and see these wonderful people that will talk to you about it. And I'm sure you've all been inspired by seeing him on a cover or a poster or something out there. But again, we cannot do this alone. So we need your help. And we're going to be updating you with things and people that have already talked about Basil in so many different ways, from his artwork to when he did the stamps, when he did the monster stamps. You're going to hear from the families. You're going to hear from the artists that are doing work now on how his artwork transcended. So join us with this incredible journey we're going on and an incredible journey that Basil had already taken us on. And we need your help with that, so we're going to be talking to you, and we hope to hear from you. And through your efforts and our efforts, we can talk about an incredible story and a man's incredible artwork that he gave so graciously to all of us. Yeah, that's an incredible legacy for all of us to keep, and we want to continue to have it, so we want everybody to be able to share it, and I think that this is one of the great ways to do that. So if you're a collector of Basil Gogo's artwork, or his magazines of famous monsters, or movie posters, or inspiring artists that want to go further, or a, or a producer, a director, makeup artist, effects person, or want to be in uh, the rock and roll business, Basil did all that, and we get a chance to tell you his story, and hopefully it'll inspire you. But again, we need their help, so hopefully they'll all join in and help us do this. So we'll be talking to you all soon. Remember, Basil Gogos, King of the Monsters.